So hello everyone, I am Nadine and today we're going to learn how to do a real-time emotion detection uh, using the OpenCV. So basically, uh, you know, like your camera can actually identify your facial expressions, it can take pictures all the time. So why not use that so you can identify your emotions and maybe later the computer can actually display some jokes or something for you, try to cheer you up or like do something according to your mood. So let's learn today how to build this real-time uh, emotion detection mode. So before, before starting with our workshop, let me first walk you through what is the assembly and tell you more about it. So basically, assembly is the smart lab. It's based in IN5, and we've been there since December 2014. Uh, we have done over 300 free workshops, and our workshops are mainly under three different categories. So the first category is the hack, and the hack category is more uh, into the embedded systems, the IoT, and the hardware. And we have the code category, which is a software projects. It is related to APIs, frameworks, apps. And then we have the last uh, workshop uh, topics that is the data science. So the data science is more you know, advanced topics that are related to AI and machine learning. So our targeted audience are the students, professionals, and entrepreneurs. But of course, anyone who's interested in our topics is very welcome to attend. So we focus on building smart technology and practical applications. You can go follow us on our forums, the members.theassembly.ae, as you can see on the screen. And then you can go follow us on our, all our social media pages uh, to know more about the upcoming workshops. So let's start by our workshop today. Uh, let me give you an overview about what we'll be doing. So first, we'll start by an introduction about neural networks. We'll know how these neural networks work. And then what is OpenCV? This is the software, that, like this is the library that we'll be using for this workshop. And then how will we uh, build a real-time model? So let's first start by a small introduction about the neural networks. So in general, neural networks, it's considered as if some kind of a brain cells uh, interconnected inside the computer. And it's just for the sake of learning things, recognizing patterns and making decisions like the human brain. Of course, it's not ha as, as accurate as the human brain, but it, it, now it's reaching to a really good accuracy. So the neural networks in general consists of different artificial neurons, which is called units. And then those units are arranged in some kind of as layers, as shown in the figure here. So those are like the neurons, the points. And then uh, since they are, you know, this line is considered a layer. And then this line is considered as a layer. Uh, so those are just the layers. And the layers are actually divided into three classes or three different layers. So we have the input layer. This is usually just one layer. And uh, this is like where the data are actually fed into the model. And then we have the hidden layers. And this is where all the processing happens and all, you know, the calculation and the prediction and everything happens in those middle layers. And they're actually like a lot of middle layers. It's not just one. And the more the middle layers increases, the better the accuracy of the, or like the more processing the model will require. Um, and then we have the output layer. And the output layer, of course, is just one layer. And this is just to show the final prediction of our model. So uh, we have, of course, between those layers, there's a lot of connections. Um, and then the connections, like it, it is called uh, weights. So it is represented by actually a number, which is weights. And those weights are actually set during the training of the model and then uh, of course uh, this weight is actually what the prediction depends on. So let me tell you more about how does the neural networks work. So in simple words I'm, I'm just gonna like link it to the real life application. If you think about that for example you're playing a bowling so the first time you play a bowling you'll just try to lift the ball and then throw it away and then if, if it didn't reach so then you will try the next time to enhance the way that you're throwing it throw it more stronger or maybe throw it in another direction. So each throw you're trying to enhance the way that you have been throwing it. So by the end or like by after some throws, you will be able uh, to throw the ball in the right direction and actually uh, make it reach and uh, do a strike or something. Okay, so that's basically how the machine works as well. Uh, it has to train and each training, it just tries to learn from the mistakes that it has done before and uh, actually modifies the weight to get the right prediction or like the most number of right predictions that it can do. 
So we have two ways uh, of new neural networks, like how it works. We have the feed forward, and then we have the feedback, which is the back propagation. So the feed forward, as the name implies, it's like passing the data in the forward direction. And this starting the forward, what I mean by forward, it's like from input, then hidden, then output layers. So we feed all the training data and the patterns in general via the input layer. And then, as I said, they will go from input and then hidden and then output. And then uh, while they're propagating through all those layers, uh, the weights are set for each unit. And this is like it happens by the neurons. Uh, and then when those weights are set, we combine, we like at the end, uh, they combine all the weights and then according to those, they compare it with a threshold value and then, you know, do the prediction for the output. So this is basically what is the feed forward for. The feed backward, it's the other way around. It's, as the name implies again, it goes from back uh, to the beginning. So it's like uh, output, then hidden, then input. Uh, so what the machine learns, and actually this is the process where the machine really learns, because once it gets the output, uh, you actually provide the machine when it's being trained, what is the expected output, and then it do its calculations and then tries to get the output. If they didn't get the same output as the expected output, uh, they have to re uh, go again and, re and change the weights accordingly to try to get uh, the same output. Uh, so that's basically what the feedback is all about. The feedback is just, it compares the produced output with the expected output. And then using the difference between them, it returns back and modifies the weights of the neurons. So it can get um, the same expected output. And the network actually learns um, and it tries to reduce the difference between the actual and the independent output uh, to the most level it can. And this is where the accuracy of the model is about. It's all about like the weights, how, uh, how the weights are adjusted. So, and at the end of all of that, when you do all that model thingy, you need to save your model with the weights. Because the weights is really the most important thing about it. That's, that's what makes the model it is. And uh, so you can actually run it on a real application. And um, that's why I'm talking about that today, because actually we're going to take those weights that are saved and then use it in a real uh, application. So. Our workshop today is going to use an, uh, a library which is called OpenCV and this library is really important and I'll tell you why. So what is OpenCV? So basically the name it's an open source computer vision library and as the name implies again uh, it's used in computer vision and machine learning software libraries. So it is mainly aimed for the real-time computer vision uh, so it's it's more into the real time things. It's not just like you know building modern stuff. It's more more specified into real time. But then you can use it for other stuff as well. But this is like you know the main thing. Uh, it was developed by Intel and then now it's supported by Willow Garage. And then um, it's available in C, C++, and Python. Uh, but we'll use Python today to write it. And it's actually a library. It's a cross platform. And as I said, it it focuses more on real time image processing. So that is simply what is an open CV. Uh, so you might be thinking what or how will we be building our real-time model? So let me walk you through the steps. So the first thing is we need to have a model. Either we build it from before or we can get it from the internet. Um, so we read that model and then uh, we have to load the weights of the model that I have been talking about uh, at the beginning because that's the most important part. And then it's safe. And then after we get the weights and everything, we start by actually opening the camera and starting to capture the frames. After we capture each frame, we need to convert it to the grayscale because that's, you know, the basically most of the models uh, need to be like to give them any images. It needs to be converted into grayscale so they can process it. And um, after that, after you convert it to grayscale, you just need to capture precisely uh, the faces and then uh, label the, those faces and then pass it to the model directly. And the model that we are actually using today, uh, it requires an input of uh, a grayscale image. So that's why we're converting it specifically. And then after we pass the, the, the faces to the model that we have, we will just use that to uh, process it. And then the model will give us the prediction back. And then we just need to display the prediction on the screen in real time as well. Because, you know, we're trying to do everything in real time. 
So that's simply how the steps of building the real-time model will go. And yeah, that's it. We can now start building our real-time model. Okay, so let's start now with the code. Uh, so first to start with, we need, of course, to import all our libraries. So we need to import OS, and then we need to import, of course, the OpenCV library, which is CV2. And then after that, we need to import some libraries from the from the Keras, and then, of course, we need the NumPy, since we are going to be dealing like converting images to arrays and stuff, and then passing it. And then uh, we need, of course, the TensorFlow, uh, because there is still some functions that will be using TensorFlow as well. Uh, and then we will need also the some specific libraries from the TensorFlow. So of course, Keras is something inside TensorFlow. So we need something like we need a specific library inside the Keras specifically. So we need the models since you know we're getting uh, some kind of stuff from the models. We need specifically the functions. Uh, for the models from JSON, because actually I'll just talk about it in a bit that our model uh, comes in a JSON form that that, that has been saved before, uh, and then uh, after you know we get the, this, we will need again the pre-processing to pre-process the image before passing it to the model. So that as well will be from Keras, and then it will be pre-processing. Um, and then we will import specifically the image things. If you want to plot for some reason, and you know when you're doing things out, you want to plot, for example, the, the frames that you're capturing, you can use uh, the matplot library. And yeah, you can just import it, and then you know do the functions and do the plotting when you get the frames. So that's for the import libraries that we would probably be needing. After that, uh, we will be needing another uh, we will be needing another uh, thing. So since we, as I mentioned, we will be dealing with a model that have been actually trained before, uh, and you know it has been built and trained before, and actually compiled it in our previous workshop. I've done a previous workshop that walks you through like each step exactly how you train it. Uh, so we just need to get the model, and then get the weights of that model, um, and then you know start running our program accordingly. Um, so the weights, the program itself, the model itself is saved as a JSON file, and then uh, the weights are saved in a .h file. Okay, so we just first need to get that before you know doing anything. Uh, so let me put another cell for that. So before starting anything, we just need to get the model, and then I'll just store it in the model uh, variable. So the function that we do is model, and then from, and then JSON. This is the function that we can do to actually convert the model that we have uh, from a JSON file, and then so we can actually use it. And to get that model, we just use the open function, and then inside the open function, we just put the path of our uh, of our um, model. So for me, I just saved it into the same folder, so it can be easy, you know, to retrieve it rather than writing. But if you have it in another uh, file, I think you need to write the whole uh, path. Uh, so yeah, so then, and then after that you need to specify why are you opening it, like read or write, so we'll use R for read. And then we'll just, sorry, and then outside that, after we open it, what we want to do is to read that file, okay? So we just get it again, the JSON file, read it, and then put it in the model. So that's simply what we do in that line. So that's the model itself. We need now to retrieve the weights as well. So how do we retrieve the weights? So what we do is that we do model dot, and then we load the weight inside that model. So as the name implies, we'll just use a function that is called load weight, <laughs> which will just load the weight of all uh, the like the layers inside that model. Uh, so here it is. So the weights, as I told you, it's saved in a folder dot h5, and then it's called fer. That's what I called it when I was saving it from the previous model. It's up to you. You can call it anything, actually. Uh, it's just, you know, that's this is how I called it back then. And for this model, since we are uh, capturing faces of people, um, OpenCV actually provides a really cool thing um, that you can actually use. 
uh, it is just specified like it's it's there it's already there by the library of the OpenCV and it is used for capturing faces only and like basically specifically the front thing of the face so they have other libraries the same and then you can use it uh, for capturing the eyes and you know there's several stuff but what we need today is just the face itself and because that's where we will do our processing so I'll just call it for example face and this is the variable that I'll store my thing in it and then cascade okay and then inside it the function that we can actually call the thing created by the open cv is called uh, cascade okay and then uh, classifier okay so this is the classifier and inside it we just specify the name of the classifier that we'll be using and then you need also to put it in the same path as well uh so that's one thing so the name for this one it's called uh har so let me just make sure that this one is, all, is called the same way and then we'll just call it har cascade this is the name of the folder itself A frontal i just want not to misspell it it's frontal face and then we just want the default dot okay uh so again, the, the one for the eyes, I think it's called eyes default or something like that. You can get it uh, always and know what is the name of it. So that's for the first part. We just now loaded the model and then have the other model for classifying the faces ready. So what we need to do now is, you know, start capturing the videos. And that's like according to the uh, steps that we have wrote before. So let me do another set for that. Uh, so to start capturing the things, we just... Uh, first, need to open the camera, the video camera. So using OpenCV, you can just do it this way. You will do C, uh, CV2 dot video capture, and then make sure that is capital capture, and then uh, you add here zero. So the zero, the, this just this is uh, just means that you are using the default camera. So if, for example, you're connecting another camera. Um, and you, you, you want to use like the other one, so you just put one or whatsoever. But then we're here using just the default camera for the laptop. And then I will store this, this function actually returns a value, a Boolean value, uh, whether you know the thing is opened or not. Uh, it's not, sorry, a Boolean value, it returns a value, and then you know you can actually identify from it whether it's open or not. Okay, so we'll just take uh, this in a thing called capture, cap for example, and then before starting uh, processing the frames that we got, I, we just first, you know, need to make sure that the thing is actually open and it didn't fail. So we'll just put an if statement just in case to make sure that the, the video capture has been already open. So there is a function that you can do on that capture thingy is that uh, the function uh, which is called uh, is open. Okay. And for the is open, uh, function uh, it's just like you know it turns true or false whether it's open or not uh, and then you know if it's it, if it's not open maybe we can print like uh, fail to open and then uh, we exit okay so that's that's the first thing that we uh, do now since we've reached it to this point so we already made sure that the video capture has been opened and everything is fine so we can just run a while true uh, that will run forever sorry that will run forever and each time it will just take the um, the output that we have and then uh, you know do the processing and everything so it will just capture the frames and then start doing the processing on the frames so even before that uh, even though if the video capture is open and everything, uh, we need first to start reading the frames, okay? So to start reading the frames, we'll just use a simple function, which is cv2.read, as the name implies again. And then, uh, sorry, it's cap.read, we'll call it on the video capture that we have, the variable of the video capture. And then we need to store the output of that uh, read in two variables. So actually the read function, it returns two values. So it has, for example, uh, first thing is a Boolean variable that detects whether there is actually something read or not. So we'll put that in the return. And then the other one is the frame itself. Okay. So I'll just call it the frame, uh, like the, the frame itself that it just captured. 
okay so i'll just store them in two different uh, things and then you know we can have it so again before starting anything it's better always to have the verifications and everything so it's better to make sure that it actually returned any values because even though if the video captured is open there is, can still be no streams or no frames taken or something so you first need again here to make sure that there's a stream or like it, it, it received a frames so we just need to make sure that if it's not returned, like the return is false, we can just uh, break or something. And then we can print that, for example, uh, no frames received. OK. So that's for uh, this part. After we did that, now we should have the frame. We are sure that we have a frame actually in hand we start to need to do the processing. So the first thing that we need to actually do is to convert our images into grayscale. And that's according to the steps, again, that we said before. Uh, so to convert it to grayscale, we just, you know, we need first to store it in something. So maybe I can call uh, gray image, for example. That's where I'm going to store my gray image since, you know, it's, it's obvious. And then the function that we will use for that is called csv2 dot. And then um, we need C. So this is this is like the name of the function, CVT. Sorry, color. And we then pass it. What is the color scale that we want to do? So first we pass it the frame that we want to change, and then we say the color or the scale we wanted to use. So the gray, uh, it's it's like it has to be CV2 and then dot. And then to have it a grayscale, we say B G R to gray. Okay. So now we have the images and uh, we have it in the grayscale mode. Uh, we can actually start now by, we just like, you know, we have the whole frame and then we don't need the whole frame. We just need the face itself, like the focus thing on the face itself to get the expressions and, you know, to make it easier for the model. Uh, so we need to specify the faces in all uh, the frame. So that's where the classifier for the for the open CV comes, uh, the frontal face classifier, and that's how we use it. So how we do it is that we just get the name of the classifier that we have, okay, and then we call a function on it, uh, which is the face hard dot uh, detect multi scale and then we put inside it uh, first thing we need to put the frame but we don't give it the frame we give it the gray image and then after the gray image uh, we have to give it two values we have to give it the scale factor and then uh, the minimum neighbor so the scale factor we just have it 1.32 and then the minimum neighbor will be fine so now we've got the faces detected uh, specifically and then we need that values or those things to be stored so how does this function return uh, the values it returns its values as four coordinates x y and then w and h or whatsoever so this is just identifies the width and the height and then you know the starting point and the ending point uh, sorry the starting point and the ending point like someone we can get the ending point as well it gives you like just the coordinates and then you can you know do that so how we're going to store it, the best thing is just store it in faces of the detected. For example, that's how I'm going to call my uh, variable. And then we have to have a for loop that can actually extract those things and then pass them directly to the model. So first, we need to draw, like because it's a real-time thingy, so I think it's better always to have a triangle or a rectangle, like drawn on the face that we have detected. Uh, and then, so to do that, we need to pass all of that into a... Um, for loop to you know be able to detect the different faces that are there and then uh, we will have an x and a y and an h and a w which is uh, in the faces that we detected okay so here i think the w is passed first before the h or like it's stored first before the h so all we need to do now is that we need uh, to draw a triangle, okay, uh, or a rectangle. It's not a triangle; it's a rectangle uh, on the faces. 
So how we do that? Use, we do that using a function called rectangle. And then inside this function, we pass it several things. So the first thing we draw, uh, sorry, the first thing that we pass it is the frame. And then not the gray image because we don't want to draw on the gray image. We want to draw on the frame itself. The gray image is just used to, to be passed to the model, okay, to do the processing. But then the, the, the display is just need to be the normal frame. You don't want to have the gray scale. And then you give it the start point. And then you have to give it the end point. And probably the end point will be just x plus uh, the width. And then it will be, the other one will be y plus the height. Okay, and then after that, you need to give it what is like the color of the rectangle. That's like this is all the parameters for the rectangle uh, function. So here I just chose you know the blue, the color uh, to be like for example whatsoever. Let's just do it blue. So you just put it you know in an RGB format, and then. We have to specify, you don't have to specify like there is a default values, but it's better if you specify. So I'll just specify as well the thickness of the rectangle that we want to draw it. So it can be this one. And then after we have the thickness and everything, so this is for the rectangle. And then we need after that, you know, to cut the part, like the area of interest that we need. So again, we can still pass it to the model, like not just identifying, but as well cutting the area. Uh, that is interested to us or like what we need okay so I'll just call it a uh, region of interest okay because that is what is usually called and then gray okay uh, of course again here since we're not dealing with the display we're just dealing with the image that will be processed to the model so again we will be de dealing with the gray so just think about it this way like if you want to pass it to the model then we do the gray if we want to do some operations on things that will appear on the screen then it's not the gray we'll use the normal frame so for the gray, uh, we'll use a function called, uh, so we'll just get, you know, the gray image that we had from before, and then we just need to cut from it the area of interest that we want. So I think we called it gray image before, and then to cut the area, so here, this is a dot. To cut the area that we want, we do it this way, and then we say that we need our Y, to be y plus w, and then we need our x to start from x to x plus h. Okay, so that's the area of interest. Now we have cut it over and we have it ready, our area of interest. We just need to do something that is really important. Uh, since the model that we are using, and that's the same that we have constructed before in the previous workshop, it has an input type of 48 by 48 by 1, and 48 by 48 is just the dimensions, and 1 is the color channel. So the color channel, we just took care of it, it's gray now, it's fine. We just need to also resize the image to be 48 by 48, because of course, you know, it's not 48, we're not guaranteed. So that's what we do here. So we just take the same image, which is the area of interest thingy, and then uh, we say this is the same as that dot, uh, sorry, this is the same as cv2 dot resize. And then we pass it the same image. And then we say we want it 48 by 48. Okay. So now we have it 48 by 48. What we should do now is that, again, before processing the thing to the, before giving the things to the model, we need first um, to do some processing on the image. So to do that, we have to change the image to an array first. And that's, you know, usually the, the steps that you need to follow. And again, this should be still inside the same for loop, of course, because, you know, we're taking image by image. And uh, so the image, sorry, let me call it image pixels. So we are converting it to pixels. The function that we will use here to pre-process and then have it in an array is called preprocessing.image.image2array. Uh, but then it's from the TensorFlow library, so I'll just call it like the big name for it. Because before when I just called the small one, it was showing some error. So the preprocessing, and then we'll have it from the image library that we have just imported up there. Uh, and then we'll have image to okay and yeah so that's basically it and then we just pass it the ROI the area of interest 
uh, gray so it can convert it to an array okay and then after we have that ready we just now need to do some adjustments again to the to the sizes of the array so we can pass it to the model this is all adjustments are according to the model uh, so since my model needs an input that starts with 148481 so I will need to add uh, a specific thing in my uh, array so I will use the numpy expand sorry expand dimension and then I'll just here need to add so it will be the image pixels that we will be having previously and then uh, the image pixels will just add an axis of zero okay so that's for the image pixels now we have prepared everything we just need to pass this image pixels to the model so we already have our model stored in a variable called model and then uh, we need simple function that we'll use is predict you know it's as the name implies it will just give us the prediction and then we just pass it the image pixels so how does this return or what does this function return uh, this function uh, of course we need to store it in something so i just call it predictions for example so this function basically returns some kind of a matrix and then this matrix has the probability for each prediction like for example if you have seven classes here like neutral and then surprise and whatsoever it will it will return like the probability for each one and then you check the highest probability and that's what you display so how we do the things that I've just mentioned, we can just do max underscore index. So we get like the highest index. And there is actually a function uh, in NumPy, which is called uh, argmax. And this one just returns, as I said, the, the index uh, for the variable that has the highest probability. So we'll just take the predictions of zero. This is the one that has all the probabilities. And then we'll get the highest probability and put it in the put the index of the highest probability in the max index. So now what we can do is that we can have an array, for example, uh, motion detection. And then this array will just have all the things, the angry. And then uh, I'll just like uh, put it the same way that I have in my model. Uh, so let me just get it from here. This is my pre-written code rather than writing the whole thing. Uh, so in my, my model, this is how I arranged them. Like the first one was angry, then disgusted, then feared, then happy, then sad. So you know, you need to take care of the indices so we can have the right indices. And then now we have this array. We just need to take to display, for example, we can have it first printed and then of course we need to display it on the frame itself. But then, so what we will print is the emotion uh, detection. And then of index the max index since you know this is the actual thing. Uh, so that's for the first part. Uh, the second part would be uh, so yeah so we can print it out and maybe uh, let's have it in a variable vector so you know we can actually use it down there and then we can call it for example uh, emotion prediction or something. Okay. And then we can just print this thing. Okay. And then now we just need to put it on the frame again. So what we can do is to do it on the frame, we use a function called put text. In OpenCV, it's already ready. So we just do put text. And then inside the put text, we just pass it the frame. Again, here we're not dealing with the processing, so we pass the real frame. And then we pass it the text that we want to write, which is the emotion prediction. And then after that, we have to pass it uh, the starting point of the thing. So we want, again, the x. Just convert it to integer in case it's not. And then we pass it the y coordinates. And then after that, uh, after we pass it, this we have to tell it the font of course again there is default values for that but i just wanted to uh, set it this is the font that i will be using because it's it's a create it's a clear form uh, and then we will have after that uh, the font scale so i'll just use the two and then we'll use the color of course 
I will choose the color so I just go with the green and then we will have the one last thing is the thickness or like the thickness of the thing and that's it so now we have everything processed this is just for the single face what we have done this is literally for single face that's why we have put all of that in the same for loop but then after we detect all the faces we need to display like the whole frame on on the window for everyone okay and this should be in real time as well so to do that first we need to resize the image and for that uh, we'll just use the resize function on the open series so resize and then we'll pass it the frame and then we'll pass it the size that we want so we want it 1000 by 700 for example okay and this is of course is outside the for loop but still inside uh, the while loop okay and then after that we just need to show what we have on the screen so to do that we we'll use cv2 dot i am sure and then we will just give it the name of the window because it will open another window so we'll just I'll call it emotion for example and then we need to give it what we want to display which is resized okay so this is for the show and then after that we just have to add something because as you can see this is all in a while loop which is always true so we can just add something you know to uh, to break that loop so maybe we can say for example if we have a keystroke like if we like uh, press something it would just stop so I will just have it as like for example to do that we use a function called wait okay and then wait key and then inside the wait key we just put a uh, number and then we say we want to wait for B to be pressed and then after the B is pressed we just break outside the while loop which is true that which is always true so that the program is ended and then one important thing that you need to take care of release all the resources after you are done uh, or as, or like this will cause you a problem so just you know to release it will just do the capture or the video capture dot release and then maybe you can destroy all the windows that are there uh, destroy all windows so yes those are the two functions that we usually do you know to clean up everything after we're done so now we're done let's try it out and see how it works so now as you can see this is our model uh, so I'm neutral now. If I smile, I'm happy. Here and then, no. I'm to show surprise. So this is like you know, it's just again, it's processing the frames and doing everything, and then just displaying according to your mode. Uh, so of course, you can increase the accuracy of that by you know having a better model. Like you try to increase the accuracy of the model that you are using. Uh, or you know use different data set and that's all depending on the model but in this part that we have discussed today uh, you can do any like you can do really a lot about uh, enhancing the accuracy uh, so yeah so as you can see you can actually like do this further by maybe like displaying a joke or something if you're happy uh, sorry if you're sad if you detected that you're sad and you know you can do some further stuff it's really nice and then uh, you can actually use it as well if you're doing like a remote re learning or something you can know what the people are feeling in front of you so i hope you enjoyed today and i hope you have learned how to build this thing so yeah that's it for today's workshop so that's it for today's workshop i hope you enjoyed it and i hope that you learned how to actually build a real-time emotion detection using the open cv uh, if you like this video, please follow, go follow us on our social media and you can go to our YouTube channel. It has a lot of other um, informative workshops similar to this one and related to other different fields. So go follow up on our uh, pages, on social media pages and go to our YouTube and then stay tuned for other informative workshops like this one. Thank you so much.